All over the world, small groups of engineers and backyard inventors are searching for ways to get more speed out of human power. Once a year, they get together to compare notes and to compete in some pretty strange races. They call their machines human-powered vehicles, the bicycles of the future. And today, they're thinking about one thing only, speed. My goal is to be the fastest woman in the world. Well, we're going to win the ride race. Hopefully, we're just going to blow right by them. This year, everyone's trying to beat California's vector team, holder of the world record at 62.9 miles per hour. Team Phoenix, a group of students from San Luis Obispo, California, has a fighting chance for the single rider record. Inside their streamlined shell is a tricycle. Its rider sits very low to the ground, which reduces the surface area of his body pushing against the air. That decreases wind resistance, increases speed. He pedals with his feet way out ahead of the front wheel, so a long chain has to run under his seat to power the rear wheel. It's a typical design for human-powered vehicles. Compared to a conventional 10-speed, the Phoenix is much more efficient, especially with its outer shell in place. Watch what happens when both riders get up to the same speed and stop pedaling. Phoenix leaves the 10-speed behind, in part because of its lower profile, but also because of the streamlined shape of its shell. Here's what the shell does. As the 10-speed moves down the track, the bulky shape of its rider pushes aside a lot of air. That leaves a vacuum behind him, an empty space which has to get filled up again. So the vacuum sucks the rider backward and slows him down. That vacuum isn't created by the Phoenix. Phoenix pushes aside air too, but then its sleek, streamlined shell guides the air smoothly back to the rear. Getting the Phoenix shell to this point took a lot of testing. By sticking on small pieces of yarn, the team could check whether air was flowing smoothly to the rear. When the yarn was trailing straight back, they knew the streamlined shell was a success. The streamlined Phoenix was itching for a victory. But Irvine, California's Redshift has a promising design, too. It all started with an idea about how to make a less wind-resistant vehicle. Remember how the Phoenix rider is low to the ground? Well, the chain running under his seat puts him six inches above the road. Redshift's designers figured out a way to eliminate that chain. We've found a way to reduce the size uh, and the volume taken up by a chain and transmission that normally have to ride underneath the rider to power the rear wheels. We power the front wheels in this vehicle and as a result, we have to steer the rear wheel. It's sort of an exaggerated... It sounds easy, but a computer simulation shows the bike will wobble back and forth. Seems to be pretty difficult to, to hold an, an exact center line. It's very sensitive. As long as you can keep the, the center line between the two front wheels, then uh, we're doing pretty good. Rear wheel steering has its price. It oversteers. But the Redshift team hopes the advantages of a lower shell will make up for that. Redshift is also trying something else new. All the vehicle parts are bolted directly onto the shell, not on an inner tricycle frame like other teams were using. Now, the shell itself has to support all the weight. To make it strong without being too heavy, Redshift uses a styrofoam and carbon fiber sandwich held together by epoxy resin. That's how missiles and airplanes are made nowadays, and it's a technique that team members learned in their jobs as aerospace engineers. The result? An ultralight, space-age material that's almost as strong as steel. The completed shell weighs only 75 pounds, lighter than the world champion Vector or the streamlined Phoenix. But why go to all this trouble? But I see one day when people can be riding these things around, you know, to the store and back. That's what we're aiming for, to show that this technology can be applied to other things, not just the, the world record championship, which is our immediate goal. The road race. Will the space age redshift win? Or the streamlined Phoenix? Or the old champions Vector?
After just two laps, Redshift's rear wheel steering backfires and knocks it out of the race. We're not planning on giving it up. We're planning to, to, uh, to shoot for a fix. There's no reason why it can't go 60 miles an hour other than the instability. Redshift isn't the only vehicle to have problems. A two-wheel yellow wedge called Easy Racer is doing okay, though. Sitting right behind the leader, the streamlined Phoenix. The old champion, Vector, is in third. Twenty-five laps, 15 miles in just three-quarters of an hour. Speeds average 20 miles an hour, up to 40 on the straightaways. After 21 laps, the two-wheeled Easy Racer is still in second place, with streamlined Phoenix holding on to its lead. We're doing real good right now. I think we have the race won. But did the Phoenix captain speak too soon? By the next turn, Easy Racer has squeaked into the lead. At the finish, it's the two-wheeled Easy Racer and then Phoenix. But the Phoenix designer isn't disappointed. We've spent six months now getting ready to, to race here, and now we've got a vehicle. It's real easy now to just go out and train and practice more and improve on our design. The winning Easy Racer team is ecstatic, though. Hey, Ray, for bicycles. Two wheels make it better than three wheels. Every time, every time. But for sheer speed, four wheels and five riders may do even better. This mechanical monster uses more riders than any vehicle ever built before, and the MIT students who are making it expect to break 70 miles an hour in the straightaway speed trial. A 1,200-pound jumble of tubing, wheels, gears, and miles of chain, construction is so complicated that a week before the race, its builders are still working day and night. Something always goes wrong. You always have to fix it. And, and a uh, bike that we thought we could build in one summer ended up taking two years to build, but what we ended up with was, I think, top quality, so it was worth it. At 44 feet and more than half a ton, the problem now is how to ship it out to California. The group is attempting a new record out on a runway in Massachusetts to convince sponsors to foot the bill. I'll just take off. Yeah. Take way the hell off. Yeah. And then I'll stop at the, at the end of the braking zone. By now, they're calling it the new wave. The airport runway is closed down for a few minutes. The record seems only a matter of time. The first attempt, something goes wrong. It's a flat tire. A second attempt. The machine gets off to a quick, strong start, but something goes wrong again. Rigger wheel broke off. Now, New Wave needs repairs and sponsors. But the team captain isn't ready to quit. I want to pull 10 more all nighters tonight. No, I guess we really want to go to California. I mean, the machine can take it. It's safe, I guess, even if it rolls over. 22 vehicles make it to the speed race, and New Wave is among them. An air freight company flew the machine for free. We built new outriggers. So they're, they're not the greatest, but they're the best we could build in the amount of time we had. So they're working fine right now. No, no, you're all right. Oh, guys. Good luck. New Wave is the most dazzling vehicle there, impressing even its own designers as it whizzes by. Look at that. Wow. It is cruising. Hear that sonic boom? A chain carrying power from the two back riders falls off, but New Wave still reaches 48.9 miles an hour. Its designers are determined to come back again oh, next year. I still don't think we've seen our limit yet. I still think we haven't seen how fast our machine can go. 
As expected, the day's top performer in the speed trial is the world champion Vector team.